This is Catherine Toon, and I just wanted to uh, let you know about some of the stuff that the Lord has been giving me. Uh, you know, it's interesting because I was, um, I just came back from a long uh, trip and, you know, it was really good, did lots of things. And this month has just been a lot of traveling and vacation and uh, family time and that kind of thing, which is excellent. Uh, and, and I really needed to kind of get some concentrated time of the Lord. So I did that this morning. I'll be doing some more, which is good. But one of the things that the Lord kind of stirred up in me is a um, just kind of a renewed passion uh, for the whole idea of connecting with God and hearing from God. Okay. Um, and, you know, this is something that I've been operating in for a long time. Hi, Becky. Um, and one of the things that tends to happen is when you've had something for a long time, uh, you maybe you can kind of grow a little bit familiar or lose a little bit of your awe or that kind of thing. And, and you know, uh, I felt like the Lord was um, correcting me in a really sweet way, uh, you know, to value and to really bring about, like, this is not something that all Christians know how to do and um, and or are operating at a level where it's really making a difference. And, and I hear this a lot from people as I minister to them that they really struggle uh, with hearing God. And this can be actually be a place of torment. Um, you know, and I tell you, when you do connect with God, that is when um, the peace comes, that's when the answers comes, that's when your faith is able to arise, that's when you're able to get your heart healed, all of that. That connection and that awareness of that connection is what makes the life come in your life. That's when the word becomes flesh. You know, uh, Jesus said that we, in, in John 15, that we are to abide in the vine. Well, what does that mean? That, you know, we're already in the vine. You're already in Christ. As a matter of fact, the word of God says that you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, okay? I'm going to leave that because we can go a whole uh, lot of that. Um, but anyway, so... Um, I, I felt like what what the Lord is really wanting to minister is just kind of a renewed appreciation and then also just some practical help for those of you who are needing to hear from the Lord or needing to hear from the Lord at a higher level. And, you know, for me, and because I've been doing this a while, it's kind of basic, but I want to appreciate the fact that it's profound. You know, um, God is love is basic. Okay, but when do we ever leave that? We, we never leave that. The gospel is basic that a child can grapple with and get sometimes better than us adults, but we never leave the place of the gospel. We just delve deeper. And that's really true with your connection with God as well, with your ability to hear. And, you know, let me say when I'm using the word hear, um, it's not, not everybody's a hearer, not everybody that, you know, you have different modalities that you can connect to God with. And I really do bring this out in my book and I'm going to recommend this if you are struggling. It's my marked by love book, but in the introduction, because this is all about connecting you with God, I really unpack this in a deeper way. Why? Because your intimacy is all about connection. You may be one with a God that is intimately, passionately in love with you, but if you are not experiencing that, there's a breakdown in your connection, and that is your birthright. You to experience God, you to experience who he is for you, you to experience who you are in him is your birthright, okay? So in my introduction, I really unpack this, and I unpack the different modalities that this, this does. This is not a specific course on a specific book on hearing God. It's just as necessary to get you through that so you can actually uh, savor the rest of the book. But let's be very clear. So this is the book. It's on Amazon. I have the link uh, for those of you who are needing that. It is on Kindle for all of you who are maybe international um, or just like a Kindle edition. Um, and I do have a workbook. I'll flash that by you as well. Um, ding. Okay, I do have a workbook that goes with it um, that you can get as well, okay? Um, but so let's unpack this whole thing of hearing God, right? Let's unpack this. Okay, uh, oops, 
my thing expired here. And I, yesterday, I, I, I was doing something last night. I had this huge coughing fit, and I, um, we're not having that this time, but I have water just in case. <laughs> so, whoops, I need to get my actual teaching. That was yesterday's teaching. Okay. All right. So, let's, this is a beautiful thing. I want you to know something that God designed you for connection. You are wired for connection. Now, the thing is, you're an individual, right? You're an individual who is wired a specific way, who is wired uniquely, okay? Now, we have five physical senses, okay? And in that, that's, there's a parallel in the spirit that you have five spiritual senses. If you have seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, what am I, uh, feeling, okay, as your five physical senses, those are analogous things in the spirit. Hi, Cynthia that you have in the spirit. You can see in the spirit, you can hear in the spirit, you can taste in the spirit, you can smell in the spirit, you can feel in the spirit. But you know, you are you are a spirit man. That is who you are. And that spirit man, that spirit woman, okay, is one with Christ, okay? That's why we have, the word of God says that we have the mind of Christ, okay? And with that, we have the ability to connect with him. But you know what? This is, there's even more ways. It's And, and you Usually you have a primary modality that you connect with God, okay? Um, and I'm going to unpack some more modalities because there's more than just five, the five that we discussed. The other thing is some people, when they connect with God, they are feelers and they literally feel the heart of God. They can, they just, it's, it's, it's an emotional connection and sometimes it's so overwhelming and they don't know whether it's them or or, you know, why am I feeling this way? I'm grieved or I'm uh, joyful and it sweeps over you and you really feel a lot. And a lot of those people are very empathic people um, and they also feel what other people feel. They pick up on things like that, but they, it's it's an emotional heart heart connection and that is God leading you with something. And if you, I'll, I'll talk about, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say it now so I don't forget, but if you're a feeler, um, in the spirit. So basically your, your conversation is going to be what, why am I feeling this? What am I to do about it? There's something, you know, the, the word of God says Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw things. He didn't minister to everybody all the time. He, the ones that he was moved with compassion that will draw you to do things, draw you to minister, draw you in what is exactly going on. Other people, it's a little more profound in a way, are just knowers. It's just you know and you're knower. I think there's an organ in the spirit called a knower, and you just know in the spirit. You don't know why you know, you just know. And you have that sense and it's yes. And that's how you're led and it's subtle, but you need, but connecting with that and not um, uh, dismissing it, okay? Um, a lot of people, we get into trouble when we dismiss what we know. Ding, da, ding, ding, ding. Okay, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, torched the t-shirt, that's gotten me in a lot of trouble. Okay, <laughs> but um, other people are thinkers and I, I wanna spend some time on the thinkers because the thinkers, sometimes it's kind of more difficult for them. Now, I am, I'll get back to that specifically, but I am a seer. I see, I see pictures. If you're a seer in the spirit, you will see pictures or maybe you'll see video. It'll be a visual representation. Um, other people are hearers. Usually it's internal. Uh, usually the Lord doesn't have to do an external thing. You know, in the Bible, it didn't happen very often. And when it did happen, you know, some people would hear and the other people said it, they heard thunder. Okay. Um, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yes, Jesus heard it. Um, and other people heard thunder. Okay. Um, uh, but it's usually an internal hearing. Okay. Um, the thinkers uh, are, and, and then let me just unpack the other ones real quick. Um, you can see in the spirit, and, uh, sorry, you can um, smell in the spirit and taste in the spirit. Hi, Derek. Those are things, those are modalities that are good. They don't, they're, they're kind of a confirmation in your relationship because we're not wired as smellers. And, you know, just like if you look at the human brain, very little bit is, um, is, is designated towards smelling and tasting, especially smelling. They're all connected. Um, so that's usually not a primary modality. You're not usually led in the spirit by a spiritual olfactory, a smelling experience, okay? But it can happen. It's happened to me, and it's pretty amazing. And it can happen in a positive way, which is that fragrance of God that is heady. Wow, that bowls me over when that happens. Hasn't happened 
happened a lot. Um, or sometimes you can smell something really demonic that is so just, whoo, yeah, that's not, that's happened too. That's not fun. Um, uh, but usually a not, not a lot is, uh, is usually not many people are led that way because we're not really wired that way. But I wanted to unpack the, the, the thinkers. Okay. Now let's be clear. Every, every way, your primary modality that you have of connecting to God is yours and God wired you that way. So there's not one better way, um, than the others. We need to value what the Lord has given us and really cultivate it and practice it and expand it and then god will expand into other modalities as well so usually what happens to me i will get a picture and then it'll be followed with a word and then god the lord will start to unpack it and i'll expand it and that's usually my way of doing things um and my way is just my way it may be your way as well but it may not be your way and you know it, it's good everything's good okay now if you're a thinker i wanted to spend some time on this because the thinkers have a, a struggle because usually it's not so bam you know usually if you got a picture you realize you got a picture okay um and it's a little easier okay because we're visual or if you get a word inside and you got the word, okay. But if you get, if, if it's a thought, um, a lot of times uh, the difficulty is to discern, wow, that's a God thought, okay. That is God literally thinking through my mind. You're literally, I mean, I think personally that that is amazing because you're hitched up with this brilliant mind and it's God literally thinking through you. You know, in the encounters that I've had, um, heavenly encounters that I've had in visions, we don't generally talk. We, it's like, we know it's like this telepathic type thing. Now it's a Jesus thing. So don't get all new age weird. Okay. We're good. Okay. And the new agers don't have everything wrong. So let's not freak out. We're, we're rooted and grounded in love. We know who we are. We're not going to get weirded out. Okay. But in that place, but usually it's in this place of, wow, you just know, and you're communicating through your thoughts. It's really interesting. So that is a precursor. That is something, wow, if that's happening with you, praise God, that's awesome. But I, I want to help the thinkers with that because it's a little more subtle. And a lot of times they get really frustrated. Uh, my, my husband is a thinker and he's, man, he's a thinker's thinker. Like he's like really, really a thinker's thinker so wow he'll get hit and so his issue was discerning wow this is a god thought and usually what happens is it's a thought that happens that you wouldn't have thought that's definitely in line with scripture every time you get something from the lord you need to or what she thinks from the lord you need to filter it through the word of god this is what you need to know the word of god and the character of god you know, sometimes it's not like a scripture. It's like his overall character. And let me just be very clear. God is love. It will never, ever violate that ever, ever. This is your, this is a safety for you. Okay. So he's not, you're not going to get a thought, gee, I need to sleep with that someone unless it's your spouse. Okay. All right. That's not going to happen. That thought was from the enemy. So you got to be clear. So the issue is always, is it me? Is it God? Is it, is it the devil? Right? Isn't that what the issue is? Now the devil is pretty easy. Let's just knock that one out of the way. Uh, number one, it's going to be, it's not going to be in line with love. It's going to be, it's going to lack peace. Okay. It's going to certainly not be scriptural. Now, sometimes the enemy, let's be clear. He knows scripture. He can manipulate that. What did, what did, what did the enemy do when he was tempting Jesus in, in the wilderness? He was using scripture, altering, altering it just as hair. Okay. And you know, and Jesus could have said, well, this is scriptural. This must be God. Okay. All right. I'm saying, so he does know that don't be, don't freak out. No, nope, no freaking out. God's going to help you. But I'm saying it will always line up with the word of God and it will always line up with the character of God and it will carry with it the fruit of the spirit. This is with everything you're getting from the Lord, whether you're thinking or not. I'm just unpacking it in the thinking section because it's it's a little more subtle with that and you need that discernment, okay? So it will line up with the word of God and it will carry the fruit of the spirit. It will carry peace. It will carry peace in the inward part, okay? Where you know what? Um, this is how, this is actually the most reliable, like really you're not going to miss it because in that place where you're one with Christ and being led by the peace, the word of God says, it says that, or to, that the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. And it says in a different place, it says, let peace be the umpire of your heart, sifting and deciding all things. Okay. So all things 
is all things. And so we'll always carry that flavor, even if you're not really happy emotionally. Like, you know, how many of you have been led to do something by God that you just don't want to do? Emotionally, you just don't want to do it, but you know it is the right thing to do. And you know that ultimately if you push past, it's going to turn out well, but the getting there from here may not be fun, but you know in your knower, okay, that place of peace, that's going to be, that. that is how God is leading you. And that's not necessarily a sense. It's just the way he leads all his kids. So everything you're getting from the Lord needs to line up with the word of God and needs to line up with that peace level. And that means you're going to need to spend time practicing. Oh my goodness, can I say this? Practice, practice, practice. Practice, 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 practice. This is how you get really, really good at it. So people come to you to say, what are you getting from the Lord? It's because you've practiced, okay? Um, because we are wired as a spirit person to be connected in, in the spirit. But the thing is, we've got all sorts of stuff coming up here that it's like static or honestly distraction. I mean, you know, I've just spent the last almost month doing amazing, pleasant things, not everything pleasant, but a lot of sort of like worldly and not bad, but worldly things that I've not been, you know, it's, you don't have to use your spirit. You're not developing your spirit in that man, in that thing. You're, you're enjoying things that God richly has given you to enjoy. Um, but boy, I woke up this morning and I needed to retreat. I needed to get some, some of that connection going and it was awesome. And that's when he kind of corrected me in a really gentle way. You know what? Va value that. Release it. Don't, because people don't. Uh, you know, it's for me, it's such second nature now that I don't have to think about it. Um, but not everybody's there and I don't want anybody to feel condemned or less than whatever. You know, I remember when I was a young believer, I was so frustrated and I would, I would, I would be like, oh, everybody hears from God. I never hear from God. And I was whining and complaining. It was a glorious moment. No, I'm just kidding. It was not. Um, and finally, it was funny. God just pipes in. It's like, Catherine, if you just quit, quit complaining about it, you could probably hear me. It was really funny. It was like, okay, oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Jesus. I'll do that, right? And it was so, because he just boomed right in there uh, because he needed to quit my whining and complaining. And it realized that you have been hearing, hearing. I like to use the word connecting from God to God because sometimes if it's not your modality, it will confuse people, right? It will confuse them. So um, so you you have been connecting with God really since since the time you were born. Now, I've had some really vivid, vivid, prophetic seer experiences in the Lord that's just part of my gifting um and that kind of thing and not everybody has that and it's okay to want that okay it's okay to want those things and I, I really believe that as the the place to start with that is with whatever you have however you have been gifted okay start with that and keep on going, right? Because I'm saying all the ways that there are to connect with the Lord are available to you. God didn't give you defunct spiritual equipment, okay? He didn't give you retarded spiritual equipment, okay? He gave you all the equipment and we just need to learn how to use it. And that's by practicing. And guess who's gonna help you in that process? Trust him to help you. You know, he wants you to experience his, his heaven on earth, right? Right now, right where you are. He wants that intimacy with you more than you want it. He wants you to have the answers that you need more than even you want it. Okay. And that comes from that place of connection. Okay. So in that place of connection, okay, remember we need to be weighing it with the word of God with peace. Okay. Um, but uh, he wants that. So he's going to be helping you. So you start wherever you're at and you keep on going. You know, journaling is really helpful. Why? Because it causes you to focus. I can be a little bit just my personality. I'm kind of a triple A personality just by nature. And so I tend to can be all over the, all over the map. Um, I multitask, okay? And so sometimes I really need to settle in and hunker down and really focus and discipline myself and journaling helps that. Um, but the truth is for me personally, where I am now, 
um, is I just spent, I just practice his presence all the time. That's just my default. So even when I was on vacation, I'd be practicing his presence. Um, I remember scuba diving, right? It was so much fun. Um, practicing his presence. I, I wanted him to enjoy it, right? If he, if, he, if we're not to entrust an, an uncertain riches, but in the living God who richly gives us all things to enjoy, right? Okay. I wanted to enjoy everything with him. He wants you to enjoy your day with him. That makes your day a holy day. Every day is a holy day. Why? Because you're one with the one who is holy, right? And and so all of that. So that is yours. So you start with the modality that you have and you really practice that. Hone it. Don't despise it. Don't say, well, I really wanted to be a seer or I really wanted to be a thinker or I really wanted to be a hearer and all those things. The answer is yes, you can get all of that, but it won't be your primary modality because you're wired differently, but you can really get good at all of that. And it really is practice. It really is practice. And it's practice, you know, if you're just starting out, you'll need to give yourself some dedicated time to this. You know, um, as you kind of grow in this, it's always good to get dedicate time to the Lord. I just don't want you guys to make this a work, okay, where you've got to put your time in um, to be a good little Christian. Well, you already are a good little Christian because you're in Christ and he made you that way. So do those things that are there for you, not little hoops you need to jump through or check off your list, right? They're things that you need. He gave it to you for you because you need it. Prayer is something you need. Worship is something you need. God doesn't need it. God's sufficient and his self-sufficiency, right? And that's what we need in our connection. So in that place of practicing, okay, you need to spend dedicated time. It's good. One thing that really helps you in that practicing um, is asking God questions like about what he's showing you. Say your gift is, say your primary modality is as a thinker. Well, suddenly this thought comes in your mind. Wow, this is a way to handle this situation. And it can be very practical. Uh, you know, the supernatural isn't always spectacular. Sometimes it's subtle, okay, but it will always care, be in line with the word of God, carry peace with it, and carry the presence of God with it. And so what's happening is that you are honing in your discernment, okay, to be able to pick up what is that. Okay, is that me, God, the devil? Okay, so the devil's always, it, 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 he, he may have scripture in it, but usually it'll go amok somewhere and it's, it doesn't carry the thing of peace. And you camp out with that till you get it. Okay, so that's the devil. Okay, the big one usually is, oh, I think I made it up, particularly if you're a thinker, right? Oh, I'm not sure I can trust it. Well, let me just say, because um, we make it difficult, we make it difficult. Like we're afraid, I think a lot of times we're just afraid to trust in the goodness of God. Like, oh, that's too good. Like, wow, I have this addiction and God's gonna deliver me and I don't deserve it and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's too good. Well, that's God. That's love, that his nature is love. It's going to be good. If it's not good, it's not God. Let's be very clear. It's gotta be also in line with his nature, okay? And so we start to second guess ourselves and we talk ourselves out of something that God gave us. Now, let me just say this. Let's say whatever you got from whatever modality is scriptural, okay? It carries peace with it, um, but you're still not sure quite if it's you or, or God. So can I suggest something? Why don't you assume, why don't you assume it's God and keep rolling with it Okay, and let God develop it because what happens is you become, um, it's like he's wooing your heart and he's convincing you, this is me, this is me, yes, it's really me, yes, me, right, okay, and so, um, and so he will convince you and so go with it and if it's not him, say this is you, say, you know, um, stay with it because if it's, if it's not ending up being God and it's just you, you're going to lose your peace. Remember what I said? Let peace be the umpire of your heart, sifting and deciding all things. Okay. And continue to dialogue with the Lord. So God, what is it? Now, let me just say this. Anything you get, okay, you can expand on. So say you got a picture. Well, go back into that place of that picture using your imagination. Let me give you some scripture here to help you so you don't start so no one starts freaking out that I'm doing some sort of new age thing. Um, so Ephesians, let's go to Ephesians 118. I have about 25 different Ephesians versions of this because it is fascinating 
because this is the prayer of Paul for the uh, the church at Ephesus, okay? Um, and, you know, it literally, like he had to pray this. There's an anointing that comes on this. And he said, I'm reading the Amplified Version, it says, And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you. So in our seeking seeking the Lord, okay, let's be very clear. He's right here. So it's not like, is he over there in the bush? Is he in Jerusalem? Do I need to make a pilgrimage? You know, like he, he's in my church. No, God's right where, where you are. But what we're doing is seeking an awareness, awakening our senses. What this is about is awakening your senses. And he uses visual uh, language because really this is talking about your imagination. Other, other translations actually bring out the word imagination. Um, the, the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your heart. Okay, so what's the eyes of your heart? It's your imagination, right? Hi, Peter. Um, so the eyes of your heart, okay, is your imagination. And that literally needs to be stirred up. Because let me just say, oh, beloved one, we tend to be dense, okay? We're beloved, dense kids sometimes. And it's like God's all around. He's got it going on. The heaven is right where you are. It's a membrane away. And that membrane is usually your awareness. So it's an awakening and a stirring up. And we just tend to be clueless. And we're beloved and delighted in, in our cluelessness. But let's get over our cluelessness because we need what the Lord has to offer. To, to say what has to offer okay other translations say the eyes of your heart um and it's interesting it says it's the spirit of wisdom and revelation okay what's that that is holy spirit right the spirit of wisdom and how many of you need wisdom i need wisdom how many of you need revelation i need revelation we need all that and so it's an anointing by his spirit he's giving you wisdom and revelation through the modalities that he's wired you with and you can expand on the modality that you have and get really good at it and then you can expand that into all the other modalities and that is practice right um it says um I'm trying to figure out which, which version I want to read here because they're so good. Uh, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee. He wants you to know it. Now, this is the word epignosis, to know. And this is intimate, uh, intimate experiential knowledge. Okay, this you are encountering God. Okay, this is not a head trip. It's a head, heart, body, soul, everything you got trip, okay? He wants you to connect with him on an experiential level because the word of God says that as we see him as in a mirror, that we are being transformed from glory to the next level of glory. So he's transforming you and he's transforming the word world around you. But we got to like wake up, whoo, have our eyes enlightened, have our spiritual eyes, have our spiritual senses stirred up and by the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can know there's three things that we can know, okay? And remember, this is not just, I got it, I checked it off my mind list, my intellect, okay? Although your intellect's important, so don't leave that behind either. You get the whole enchilada, baby. You get everything, okay? So that you can know and experience the hope of his calling. Okay, so let's unpack that a little. Well, I'll, I'll read them off first and then we'll go through it. The hope of his calling the glories of the riches of the inheritance in the saints and his mighty power to those that believe. So there's three things that, that he is inviting you that Paul literally was saying, who I keep on praying. Wow. Cause what's the, what's going on? We got all this natural crap coming in all the time. And some of the natural stuff's good. And some of the natural stuff is crap. Uh, you know, if you're in, if you have illness, okay. And you, you've got that pain just smashing you all the time or the doctor's report. If you're financially broke, you've got the, how am I going to pay my bills smashing you all the time? If there's strife or problems in, in, in distance in your relationships, 
you've got that coming in all the time and that is a bunch of things that that are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God hi Rachel those are the things that are, are, are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God so that's coming in and what the Lord is saying wow we need to well let's back up let's get into that that secret place where wow it's you and me now I am going to peel back me I'm gonna peel back the heavenly realm I'm gonna peel back the hope of my calling for you because his calling for you is not I mean yes there's a ministerial call yes there's a vocational call but there's also a call wow and how he's your health there's a call in every detail of your life okay so he's 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 inviting you but that's an anointing by that and so so let the helper the helper who is the spirit of wisdom and revelation help you to engage in that place and a lot of times what happens is we get so busy and we keep on going on we and and we sort of we kind of live our lives um but sometimes there are seasons to dedicate time because you know you've been doing life i mean as i said i just been basically off just under a month of good natural godly things but it's not been dedicated things. So I'm like retreating back to that place. I need like, oh, I need to stir up this thing in me. Um, why I need the eyes of my understanding and light. And so I'm, I know the hope of my calling and knowing that hope of, of his calling. Okay. Well, and, and let me just say this. Okay. It's his calling. Okay. I, I say that for a reason because sometimes we get focused on us and you see what God has designated for you is an upgrade probably for what you would have for you. Or sometimes there are things that we really want, okay? Maybe you just really want to experience walking on water. Great, okay? But is that what God has for you? Because there's gotta be a reason behind it. Now, sometimes the reason behind it could be that would be really fun. Okay, that's okay too. So you talk to the Lord about that. But if that's not what the Lord is working in you right now, to kind of push it, it's like I'm I'm over here. Let's let's do what I'm doing because there's an anointing on that. Okay, I was talking to someone yesterday, and she was like, she keeps on trying to bring her gift to the church, and the church just is like they don't they just don't get it. They're like, we don't we don't get it. And I'm really when you are barking in the audience that's not your audience. Okay, a lot of times they just don't get you or appreciate you. And you know, no condemnation, Christ Jesus, but that's not where your ministry is going to happen. And and literally, she keeps on being invited by all these new agers to like share her artwork and do all these things. And she was freaking out because she came out of that world. And the truth is, God's calling her into that world to minister in that world, and that He can keep her from going to the dark side. But boy, there's things that need to be redeemed from that world, and there's people that need to be redeemed. And she has the language and the capacity to do that. So I'm mentoring her through that process. So a lot of times we 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 think, well, I gotta minister in the church, I gotta do it this way, or it has to look like this. And the hope of his calling is not that. So we need to be seeking what we need to be open and seeking what that is for us. And it will have, you don't have to seek the anointing in that place of what he has for you. It is already anointed. It's not like you're gonna have to fast and pray for the anointing to come. You go where the Lord is leading you. It, those steps, it's dripping with fat. Okay. It's dripping with anointing. Okay. You automatically will flow and move in that place. You know, it's interesting when I um, uh, got into my place of where I was supposed to minister, it was just surprising to me. I, I, I had all these avenues of ministry people connections that I'd had for years and boy, and it's not like they weren't connections and good and all that kind of thing, but that wasn't how, where the Lord was taking me. There's a whole new audience Hi there. Um, there's a whole new audience. This is what happens when you flap your hands um, that I never knew that was suddenly whoo, opened up and that was the door I was supposed to go to. Okay. And you follow that. That's the hope of his calling. And we need enlightened eyes from the spirit of wisdom and revelation to do so. Okay. Then the second thing, okay. The second, the glories of the riches of the inheritance in the saints. And I see that in two ways. Number one, the saints are his inheritance. That is his thing. Like he is all about that. Like what does the gold and the precious metals mean to God? They're just there for us. But what's the gold and precious and all that kind of thing is you. So mining 
the world to wake them up to the reality of Christ and the finished work of the cross and them to be uh, to them to to partake of the divine nature okay that's the inheritance of the saints another inheritance in the saints is everything that he's already purchased for you that's all on the inside of you that needs to manifest on the outside what was purchased on the cross your healing your wholeness your peace your protection relational um, relational uh, anointing favor everything for your highest good that is to be mined on the inside out that is why that is why the word of God says work out your salvation with fear, fear and trembling it's not like oh my god I got I gotta step on that step and I gotta step on this and and if I get it wrong I'm gonna fall off and lose my salvation that's not that mm -mm. it's like it's already completed so we are engaging to find out what does that really mean and how do I manifest that? And that is a grappling with the Lord that we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him. We need our eyes enlightened. We need our senses stimulated so that we can embrace uh, and receive and, 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 and mine the glories of the riches that are inside. Whoa, Jesus, that's like good. I'm sorry. I'm happy getting happy here. The glories of the riches that are inside us and it's inside you. The kingdom of heaven is inside you. It is not far. It is inside you and it is an awakening and a stirring and embracing and you run with it with your bad self because God didn't lay it up from you. He laid it up for you and the sons of God are led by the spirit of God to be able to experience all of that. And the church said, amen, right? All of that, that is yours. Oh, and you won't be denied. I did, I did a, um, a thing last night. I kind of coughed my brain out, but it was still good. So I kept it up, right? Um, <laughs> I love you, Peter. Drinky, drinky. Yes. Um, getting intoxicated with the goodness of the Lord, right? So, uh, so I, I kept it up even though I was coughing my brains out in portions because it was really good. It was all about just claiming what is yours. So you might want to go back and see that and just uh, keep in mind... Um, I had some coughing jogs and you guys love me. Most of you and saw me through that. You guys are awesome. And the third thing, oh, this is so good. You ready? This is like God is so good. Don't you just love me? You just got to thank you, Jesus. You're so good. Is is the mighty power towards us, to, toward us who believe. Okay, so that's that dunamis power. That is the explosive. That is big bang, baby. That is awesome all on the inside of you that is resurrection power that makes our problems look like are you kidding me like are you kidding me because if we're supposed to be taking thoughts captive um, if we're supposed to be taking thoughts captive and making them obedient to Christ well how do we do that you need to pack some power okay you have been given the authority and you need to know the authority but you need power you need might behind the right okay and that explosive power that transforms things okay that that spirit of might is all on the inside of you you there and how do we connect with that we need our enlightened eyes we need our senses enlightened because all that is yours all of that is yours um and, and and the word of God says, uh, and so the word of God says, and uh, to those that believe. So it's not like it's not yours if you don't believe. It's just you don't have access to it. Like if you don't believe it, your eyes aren't going to be enlightened, right? You're going to be an unbelieving believer that's uh, packing this power that raised Christ from the dead, and it's like I don't have faith to you know believe myself out of a paper bag, you know? So that's what that is. It's not like you got to jump through the hoop. That is not through the heart of God. He's telling you what needs to happen. And so if belief, believing is a problem, well, you need ministry to your believer. You need ministry to every place that's been harmed, where hope has been deferred. You need ministry there, all of that. Okay, that's a different topic. But I just want to make sense. The heart of God is not like, okay, well, when you believe, I will get that to you. Okay, that's just not like you. He's looking for a way to get it to you, okay, to get it to you. I was talking with my sister. We were going to be doing a kind of a painful visit, and I really didn't want to go. She didn't really want to go, but she had a need, but I wasn't hearing anything, and I, you know, it was like it was going to be expensive, all that, and she, and, 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 and she was trying to convince me to go, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not hearing what I need to hear, and she was got all really upset with me, and she said, "Catherine, she goes, it just sounds like you don't want to. You're you're listening to find a reason not to go." And I said, "No, 
No, it's not. I'm listening to find a reason to go. And boy, when I heard it, it was all over. Like money, who cares? Time, inconvenience, exhaustion, whatever. It's all over. And that's how the God, he's looking. He's looking for an avenue to get it to you. Okay. Not to keep it from you. So this is not about you jumping through hoops. It's about Jesus and his heart. And how can we get past this mind that has this much capacity? And I've got, I've got, I keep on knocking this thing over. And, and I've got, you know, the power that raised Jesus from the dead that, that created the world. I've got all of that inside them. And they're like, we're operating here. How can I help them? And that's why we need a mind renewal process because our little minds need help. And how do we do that? Well, one of the ways we do that is by getting our senses enlightened. So when you are encountering the Lord through whatever sense you have, you are literally engaging with him to, um, to get past the areas that cause you to break down. Yes, Peter, I am totally preaching to you. Yes, Becky, I'm totally preaching to you. Donna, I am preaching to you. I know, but I'm preaching to many. I really hope this gets out. So why don't you share it? Because I'm thinking people are really needing this. So, um, so let's talk a little bit more about the, the different modalities. Um, let me give you another, can I give you like juicy scripture? Well, they're all juicy, but like there's some that have an extra juice <laughs> in them because it's a timely word. I love this. You ready? Okay. This is Deuteronomy 29, 29. I love it when it's the old, old Testament, you know, which sometimes can be really painful because, um, you know, th there wasn't a full revelation of Christ, but I love it when God just kind of, I can't help myself. I got to sneak in there with my goodness. Um, right. It says verse 29 says the secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever. Okay that we may follow all the words of this law. Okay, so when don't get all freaked out about the law. Belong to us and our children. These are people under the law, and literally God was giving them gifts uh, that belong to them forever, not only to them and your children. You see, God is so sweeping. It's not just about you. It's about your legacy. It's about what you carry, and it's so... <laughs> It's so big. How do you like my sound effects? So big that it can't be contained in one generation because it's designed to go from generation to generation and not only that, amplify from generation from generation. And then in addition, going back in the generations to create restitution. So all those things that were stored up to your forefathers and your foremothers and all that, that they left behind, they forfeited for lack of knowledge. Oh baby, you go mining. You go, thank you, Jesus. You go mining because it's there for you and your children's children. Let me read this again. But the things revealed belong to us and our children forever. And ultimately, this is just a revelation of Christ and the finished work of the cross. We can mine that for eternity and scratch the surface, right? That's why we need enlightened eyes. And let me say this, whatever you get, whatever you get, don't just say, thanks, Lord. Okay, and we're done. Okay, journal it. Now, if you run out of time, that's okay, okay? But go back to it because you can suck marrow and life out of one scripture, out of one encounter. Thank you, Peter. Out of one word from God or picture from God. You go back there, one thought from God, one feeling, one knowing. You go back there and you can expand it. And then you can bring your other senses to bear. So say you did get a picture. Awesome. Go back to your picture. Okay, go back, go into that encounter as an act of your will, right? See, Jesus, I'm going back with your imagination. Go back to that encounter and start to look around and start ask questions and start to, oh, what am I hearing? What, a, hmm, what am I smelling? What am I tasting? What am I feeling? Okay, what am I knowing? What thoughts are coming to me? What do you want to flood my mind with? What, right? Go, that is yours. And you can suck the marrow out of that thing. That is yours. And no one can take that away. Our problem is that we just tend to get distracted. Can I preach to myself for a moment? Okay. We just tend to get distracted by good things, by the, oh, 
by the busyness of ministry, we can get distracted by our children. Oh my God, which are so good. You know, by the fact that we need to keep a house that doesn't reek, you know, <laughs> right? Whatever that is, right? Hi, Andy. Uh, by all of that. Okay. So that belongs to us. Okay. And remember, as all of this stems from the place of intimacy with God, you see, if you're intimate with God, God can tell you, um, honey, that direction you're going right there, that's, that's not a good idea. I just, yeah, this is, well, let's just go right over here. You're kind of getting off. You're getting into works. You're getting into looking at performance. You're getting into looking at the problem. You're getting into fear. You're getting into studying the uh, occult, which is not going to yield good fruit. Okay, so let's just scoot you right. Yeah, we're there. Blair, you, we're good. We're good. And he's able to navigate you back to where you need to be in that place of intimacy. Or he can tell you, yeah, keep on running on this vein. Because in this is the hope of my calling for you. And man, we are going to run with it. We are going to glean. There is treasure that he has for you. And that just takes practice. So if you've never gotten anything from the Lord, well, I'm saying this, that's a lie because you have. The problem is you haven't recognized it. And it is a recognition problem. You see, um, discernment, you know, it's interesting what the word discernment really talks about. It's like, it's when you have two separate entities and you don't see that they're separate, okay? So when you're discerning, you're saying, wow, this thing that I got, this portion here, wow, that was totally God, that carried peace. This over here, when I look over here, I lose my peace. Okay, that's discernment, like over here, not God. Here, God. And let me say this about the enemy. Um, if you're getting a lot of stuff from the devil, like if you are doing like a lot of warfare and you feel like you're constantly having to war, now I'm not saying that there are not periods of warfare. Oh, let's be clear. Okay, let's not be confused. But this is not your camping out ground. You see, you don't fight the enemy on his territory. Are, are you kidding me? That's called stupid. Okay, that's called you're going to get your butt kicked. Okay, that's called um, you are going to have your lunch eaten. Okay, so no. Mm -mm. And that's how, how one of the tricks the enemy uses to wear out the saints. No, you retreat back into that place. Remember, you're seated in heavenly places in the third heaven as one with Christ. So you do everything in this place of oneness with him. You're seated in heavenly places. You're not even like at the right hand of God. You're actually, actually, okay, let's just be clear, in God. <laughs> so you're stand, he's in you, you're in him. So you can look out his eyeballs, right? You're in Christ. You can hear his hearing. You can think with his brain. He's given you his mind. Just a little, uh, I know it's a little trippy. That, that, that's okay. That's okay. It's a spiritual reality. You are one with Christ. He's, he, he's in you. You're in him. Okay. And from that place, then you can look through his eyes, get his perspective and say, oh, oh, that little demon thing that was torment. Wow. That's really stupid looking. That is, that is, that's kind of funny right there. Wow. He's got a big mouth. Um, right. And you just don't buy it. And then you can take authority over things and do that kind of st stuff. So you don't spend your time trying to operate in your authority like apart from Christ. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do, oh, what was it? Uh, let me think. Nothing. No thing. So don't do it. Don't be lured out of that place. And if you got lured out of that place, right? If you got lured out of that place, no condemnation of Christ, you just get back into that place and spend your time practicing that union, practicing that presence, practice that oneness, practicing his presence, right? Practicing, re rehearsing that I'm in Christ, okay? Jesus, help me enlighten the eyes of my understanding so I know the hope of your calling. And that calling, first and foremost, is that intimacy with him, that place of union with him. And then from there, we automatically op operate in our authority and we automatically, whoo, Jesus, operate in power, raw power, raw, raised from the, phrase from the dead, power that is where it comes from 
okay? And that's where you're, you're the brunt of it. And from there, you automatically have encounters. You automatically can see with spiritual eyes, hear with spiritual ears, think through his mind, all of those things. And it's a matter of practice. And the more you practice, the better you get. Anyway, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Uh, I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover today. Um, I did want to recommend my book, so I'm going to flash it up here. Ding, da, ding, ding. Marked by Love. Um, gosh, it doesn't matter. I'll just put it in front of my face. Um, and this is on Amazon. It's on Kindle. Um, and it's all about encounters with God. It's all about encountering God as the person of love. That is his primary attribute. Yes, he's holy, but he's love. Okay, he is love, right? Um, and I wanted to flash the, thank you, I'm so glad it ministered to you. I did want to flash the workbook for those of you who want deeper encounters. We do have a workbook that is available on Amazon. And then for those of you who really want to kick it into high gear and maybe are more audio visual in your um in your makeup, that's how you learn the best. Okay, some people are really great at reading. Um, uh, uh, you, I do have a Marked by Love course, and you can check all of those things out on katherinetune.com. Anyway, so I recommend that. Uh, keep practicing, and I want to hear about your encounters. I, I want to hear what the Lord is showing you. Please share this, because I think people really, really, really need this. Okay. Um, anyway, I hope this was a blessing for you today. Love you guys. Thank you for watching and commenting and just being amazing. You are crazy loved by me, but woo, by the one who loved you and gave himself up for you. And I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.